we all have our own individual and unique history and parenting stories, I'm sure. You may have never had a father or mother. You may have actually been an orphan. You may have had many substitute fathers. You may have had feelings of anger, bitterness, resentment towards your parents. You know, I never did because I buried them. I never felt I could be angry towards my parents in a way because it didn't make any sense to me. But actually, I was suppressing emotions, not expressing them, not saying that those are good things, but they may be things that we feel. You may have rationalized your life, have no surface emotions. And I think I did that. I put things in a box, rationalize them away, you know, to, to excuse what I was missing and what I didn't have. And that really didn't help me. There is hope for all of us, as many have of us have um, discovered healing reconciliation restoration of our relationship as sons that hope is jesus who came to restore relationship with the father most of us are still in that process maybe of learning what it is to be fathered correctly i certainly am only the love of the father can empower us to love others sign up for mike's new monthly teaching series restoring first love at eg.freedomarc.org slash first dash love. God's first love is like nothing we've truly experienced in our human relationships. We may still have unmet needs, inner brokenness that causes us to seek love in all the wrong places. In fact, human love probably caused us rejection, emotional damage, pain, created our insecurities, fears, trust issues, but true first love will bring us to a place of union and oneness with ourselves and with God, enabling us to love other people. The union that we began in is being restored so that we can once again become one spirit. The journey is progressive, revealing our true identity within family. 1 Corinthians 6.17 But the one who joins himself to the Lord is one spirit with him. That means to become joined, entwined in oneness, spiritually united in union. This will usually begin being spirit to spirit communication. We begin to connect. But our, as our soul is healed and in, in union with our spirit, we will be able to engage our most developed soul areas. Our emotions, our imagination, our reason, our mind can all begin to engage with God in a way that was not possible without that union, without that oneness, without that healing that we've received. So daily, as I experienced first love, I was led to discover the garden of my heart, where I encountered the lakar from God. God was expressing his desire for union and intimacy with me at a deepest level. And I had so many experiences of that. Those encounters of first love opened my heart to be able to experience love. But first, God had to heal my father wounds for this to happen. And this was a long process, a long journey that I didn't even know that I was on to heal father wounds that I didn't even know that I had. Now, my background is not charismatic. I come from a Methodist brethren background. So I'd never heard of prayer ministry. There was never any option for getting help with anything. That just wasn't in my thinking. But God was present and at work all my life, even when I didn't know it or feel it. He was at work and he used things in my life to highlight to me that there was an issue or a problem. My first inkling of a real problem was in 1986. That was after I had children of my own. My eldest daughter, who was about 18 months old at the time, toddled up to me and said, Daddy, I love you. I froze. I did not know how to handle that. Now, I told her I'd loved her lots of times. But at that moment, something happened that God used to show me that something was wrong. My lack of fathering influenced not only my own relationship with my own children and others, but also with God as my father. I never even contemplated for one second that God was my father. 
even though the bible says it i never contemplated it that shows you how blind you can be to the truth that you're even reading or someone is preaching about and you just don't compute it does not compute my programming did not work with that programming the program did not run on my operating system soon after i got baptized so god was at work in that situation i got baptized in the spirit soon after i discovered this whole issue my emotions began to open up because the holy spirit began to engage me when i got baptized in the spirit it was like liquid love was poured into my head and filled me it's the only way i can describe it you know it was not to do with power or gifts it was pure love but that love touched my emotions and began to open me up hebrews 1 5 says this to which of the angels did he ever say you are my son today i fathered you and again i will be a father to him and he will be a son to me now of course this was spoken about jesus but also about our sonship and our co-heirship but i never knew this truth personally i never ever connected to the father as i was brought up as i went into a, the, my christian life if you like i want to share my personal journey with you of how my relationship with god as a father was restored now my earthly father came from a broken home so from a very early age he did not have a father as a role model he probably felt rejected and abandoned and probably like most of us made judgments that later came back upon him from my experience of the generational issues and familiar spirits that i had to deal with my dad obviously had needs and emotional pain he didn't show it but he probably had it he started with a disadvantage so i started life with an emotional disadvantage my father was not able to effectively show me love in any way, verbally, physically, emotionally, in any way. Now, that wasn't his fault, having no role model himself. But that didn't stop it affecting me negatively. He didn't mean it to be that way, but it was, and it damaged me. He never actually told me he loved me at once in my whole life. He never communicated with me much at all in reality. I can't remember having a real conversation with him. And there was certainly no physical affection. He never came to watch any of my school activities or sports or showed any interest in me as a person. Now, I was not abused physically or verbally, but I was certainly deprived emotionally, which had an equally serious result in my life. I was deprived of a father's love and of his emotional presence. I had unmet needs, so I sought out the comfort of other relationships. Those substitute relationships caused me much pain and damage themselves. I was selfishly seeking to meet my needs through others, which hurt them and me. No one or nothing can be a substitute for the Father's love. That, that's what I've discovered. Driven by the need for love, I pursued relationships in my teenage years with girls, or lots of them. My first steady relationship broke my heart. I vowed, I can remember what happened. I've gone through the sort of the ministry to deal with that, this, you know, but I vowed as I was traveling home on the bus, never to be hurt again. And I've had to subsequently renounce that vow because I wasn't hurt. I was unable to be hurt. I was so thick skinned. People could say whatever they like. Bounced off me. Didn't hurt me at all. The reality is that was a lie. It did hurt. I just never showed it. I was never able to show it because I had emotional walls. I put up walls of protection. They became prison walls that locked me in. Those coping and protection mechanisms closed down my emotions and I guarded my heart from her but this stopped me having real intimacy. This emotional prison kept me away from real relationships with other people and with God. They weren't real because they were based in a driven need for love, 
over the years, God was always at work and he met me in various encounters, which he used to heal my heart. Now, this was having got baptized in the spirit. I was more open for being led and directed and for God being able to communicate and engage me. The first time this, I would say, really happened was in 1989. I was with a small group of people. We were worshipping in someone's living room when God spoke to me and said, I am your father. And I heard it. I don't think anyone else heard it. So it wasn't audible to them. But for me, it was like an audible voice. God said, I am your father. It's a little bit like the Star Wars uh, and Darth Vader and Luke Skywalker. You know, and it was like that real. But I didn't know what to do with it. And I just carried on worship. And that was also the first time I ever saw an angel. And I glimpsed an angel observing what was going on. And I think that was one of my angels who had in, been invested to guard and protect me, but was watching this amazing thing. Now, I struggled with that concept. The God said, I'm your father. Now, I preached and taught and done so many things in my life. And I could not honestly say I ever talked to God as father up to that point. And even at that point, it was so hard. Now, so many of us have those experiences because of our own fathers. But God didn't stop. He didn't allow my struggle to stop him. He broke through that barrier by putting his arms around me. And literally, I felt his arms go around me physically. I felt arms around me. I felt his presence in a way I'd never felt before. And that enabled me to begin to talk to him and to communicate with him as father. Now, it was only in its infancy and I still had a lot of things to overcome. But God actually was at work in revealing himself as my dad. And I then could deal with the issues. And the root issue was my father wounds. But the surface issues were feeling rejection. So I struggled with feeling rejection. I started to receive help ministry to deal with my emotional damage. Fortunately, there were people around me in the church that we had started who were able to help me deal with these things. Now, I was not the easiest person to pray for. You know, I was once described as praying for a block of granite because I seemed so cold and so hard to reach. But things were happening on the inside, even though it didn't appear anything was happening on the outside, because there were no manifestations going on that you could see. God was at work within me. And two major issues came to the surface of my broken heart, rejection and betrayal. And a lot of hidden emotions came to the surface. And I buried most of those emotions you know because i was guarded and i didn't share emotionally negative or positive generally now when they started to surface most of them were negative to begin with all of the things that i'd never really expressed or allowed myself to feel suddenly start to come out now people around me suffered by that you know as my defenses came down I felt attacked and vulnerable. So I became defensive and angry. It hurt to feel because I hadn't felt anything much. You know, that was my protection. Don't feel. You don't feel pain or hurt or whatever. And I thought it was a great strength to have that no one could hurt me. And in reality, it was anything but a strength. It was a huge weakness. Now, as my emotions began to open up, the deeper issue of not being fathered was uncovered so all the surface things of rejection and all the experiences i had that was just the symptom of a deeper problem which was i was not fathered so god began to break in he started to to engage me in a process around fathering so first of course i had to deal with my own dad i began the process of forgiving and releasing him 
I had to settle accounts. I had to show all the things that I felt owed by him. The lack of affirmation, of approval, of encouragement, of support, of love, of anything. I had to choose to forgive him and release him from all of that, what he'd done and what he didn't do. Now, I struggled to connect emotionally with the process, but I knew it was the right thing to do. So I put my will into action and I chose to forgive my dad. But the feelings were to come. They couldn't stay buried. They had to come out at some point and they were going to come out. Now, then I had a picture of a picture of me as a little boy that changed everything. And that little picture was me sat on my father's knee in a little knitted jumper my mum knitted little red bow tie and little little shorts and i was sat on my father's knee for that picture and as i saw this picture come back into my mind because it was a literal picture that we had in our back room in a frame i suddenly realized that that picture was an absolute complete sham it was not real it was posed it never happened in real life, but it happened for a, a photograph. And that really opened my emotions up. I really connected to the pain of that. The fact that this whole thing was a sham. So I was able to forgive and release my dad for the sham of the relationship because I felt it. There wasn't that much externally but i felt the connection to the emotions and i was able to we were you know not close at all and you know by that time he, he divorced my mum and you know he was living elsewhere so we weren't connected and to be honest i didn't really want to see him and be bothered with him because there was no relationship but i had to go having forgiven him i had to go and tell him that I forgave him and I told him that I loved him and I hugged him. Now I look back and think that I can't imagine me doing that, but I did. I, I just knew I had to outwork what had happened to me. And I did. He just froze. It was like hugging a tree. You know, he couldn't respond. He didn't know how to respond. But for me, I was on this journey to freedom and restoration. But then God continued the process. In 1994, in a meeting, I was there leading a meeting, having this was planting a church, starting a church. And I was out leading this meeting and someone was leading the worship. And I just found myself on the floor wailing. Absolutely every emotion that had been stored up all broke open and they just poured out. And literally, I was making a real racket. Now, fortunately, the people who were there looking to me to know what to do didn't know what to do. So they didn't do anything, which was exactly what they should have done. They just, I just let it all out and it all came pouring out. All the emotion of all the stuff that I'd held in all came out. And I felt like a ton weight had been lifted off my shoulders. I felt so light when I got up off the floor. And I rejoiced. It was amazing. But God didn't stop there. God wants to restore things. So in 1996, I had my first encounter in heaven. Now, I didn't really understand that at the time. I was in a worship setting. We had a great saxophonist at the time who played this note. And as he played this note, it like ascended I went on that note and I found myself with God as father. He had me on his knee. He bounced me up and down. He played with me. He restored what I never had in the physical with my own dad. And he gave me what was not a sham. This was a real experience that was like nothing I'd ever experienced before that time. And it was just so amazing that God would take the time to play with me, his kid, his child. It was wonderful. Now, that, again, was just part of the journey. My relationship with God as Father continued to develop over the years. 
it became so much more normal to see God as father, as dad, and I would pray to him as that, and I would engage him in that way. So I felt healed and restored to the degree that I knew at the time. Now, I didn't realize there was more. God didn't stop there. He continued to work in my life, but the scars of the father wounds were still there. I didn't know that, but they were. There was still a sense where, you know, I could be in a room and still feel alone. Um, and, you know, there were still issues that were there. And then in 2008, I had my first true encounter in heaven. At my desk, a portal opens. I go through the portal. I'm by a river of fire and literally completely in a trance-like state. And I experienced the fire stones in Eden for the very first time. I saw a river of fire flowing from the throne of God, from the ancient of days. I knew where that scripture is in Daniel. I was fully saying, wow, this is amazing. And I saw some steps going up to the throne and I just knew I had to step on them. And I stepped onto the first step and I merged with the stone. It was pure, unadulterated, unconditional love at a level I'd never known before. Deep emotional love, touching my emotions in ways that I hadn't experienced before. And even when I got to the top of those steps, I couldn't look at God as Father. I couldn't look. I couldn't lift my head, which was an indication, you know, although I didn't see it at the time, that there was something still needed to be done. And then I wanted to go back into that experience. So for two years, I tried everything to go back into heaven. Nothing worked. And in June 2010, I was going to a conference for the day. It was just a it was a three day conference, but I was going to go for a day. Um, someone invited me to go. So I was going. And on the way down in the car, wasn't far, about 75 miles away. I was going and God said to me, I want you to give me my your full attention. So I thought, oh, OK, didn't really think too much of it. But I, and I went and the worship started. And they started singing songs I'd never heard before. And wow, that whole thing opened up my heart to a new dimension of intimacy and desire. Literally, I gave God my full attention. I was like unaware of what was going on around me. I wasn't really interested in what was happening. In fact, I was so taken by this that I stayed for the full three days. I found somewhere to stay for a few days nights and just stayed and i just spent that time giving my absolute full attention to god as he began to change the desires of my heart god's desire for me to know his love went deeper and it changed my heart's desire and on the way home from that conference god spoke to me and said i want you to do a 40-day fast so in august 2010 I went on a 40 day fast during that, as I was engaging heaven and I was engaging God and I'd met with Jesus and the Holy Spirit had quantum physics lessons. Amazing things happened. As I encountered that, Jesus came to me. And he started talking to me and he said, you've not met the father. Now, I thought I dealt with all my wounds. I was in heaven. I was talking to Jesus. I didn't, it was amazing. And then he said to me, you've not met the father. And then he went on to say, because you have a father wound. Now, I started to argue, you know, you're never going to win an argument, of course. But I started to argue, well, I've forgiven everyone. I've forgiven my dad. I've had ministry. I've met with the father before. All these sort of things. Jesus said, he didn't, that didn't put him off. He just said, you have a father wound. And then he showed me my heart. And as I looked down, there was this huge scar superimposed over it. And he then said, will you let the father heal it? Of course, I said, yes. I didn't know what was going to happen, but the father came to me. Now, what did the father look like? Well, he looked like Jesus because Jesus is the express image of the father. He's not like Jesus with longer white hair or whatever. He just looked like Jesus. But I knew it wasn't Jesus because Jesus was also there uh, watching. So I, this was the father came to me and for about 45 minutes in earth time, he just said the same words over and over again. I love you. I love you. 
I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. And every time it's saying it was like, it was exponential. It was like 10 times more powerful than the last time he said it. Every word of love he spoke healed my heart. The scar tissue diminished until I looked down and the scar was completely gone. And he still continued to say, I love you. I love you. I love you. And that was so powerful. And that was the turning point in my relationship with God, in the union of that relationship, in my understanding sonship, because I still didn't understand what sonship was at that, mo at that point. I've continued to have many wonderful times of intimacy with, with the Father in places that are beyond, you know, would have been beyond my wildest imagination. But that is what he wants with every one of his children, a deep, intimate relationship. Now, all my experiences of healing had brought me back from minus 100 on the fathering scale to zero. I now needed to be fathered because I'd never been fathered. I began to see that because of my woundedness, I'd unintentionally wounded my children. I had to be forgiven and healed from that also. You know, and sometimes and that hit me at several times, and I'll I'll share some of that in in other sessions. And then in 2016, I was in Phoenix, Arizona. I was doing a conference, and I was doing a session on the Father Heart of God and an activation of engaging the Father's love. And then, I don't normally engage in activations that I'm leaving in that thing because you know I could just go off somewhere and never come back you know, in the sense and I'm teaching something, so I need to be aware. So I don't tend to fully engage, but this time I had no choice. I found myself in heaven, in the court of the upright, and my earthly father, who I, at that point, back in 2016, I didn't even know, it. I didn't even think he would, would have been in heaven, because he'd given me no indication that he would have been there. Um, he came to me. He came out of the cloud of witnesses, and he told me how proud he was of me. We hugged, expressed our love, and it was amazing closure. It just brought a closure to my whole father wound experiences. And what I had never received, my dad actually came and gave me, which was amazing. And then I remember watching the Shaq movie, and in that movie, this very something very similar happened. You know, that this was an expression of a restoration of relationship. And it isn't just relationship with God that can take place. We can have relationship with others as well. Now, I began a daily conversational walking relationship with the Father, which led me into a deeper union of being. You know, it's like this was an ongoing thing. Originally, this occurred as I daily opened my first love gate in my spirit or I engaged, you know, with God in the garden of my heart, lying down in green pastures you know, in the Psalm 23 experience. I also encountered God in the heavenly realms at the throne of grace or the father's garden. You know, I learned to live loved and to love living and live loving, being at rest in his limitless grace and triumphant mercy because his mercy had triumphed. His grace had overcome these issues in my life. You know, we are sons, part of God's family. Discovering our true identity is, is not that we're a slave. We're not a slave. We are righteous. We are accepted. We're no longer alienated or condemned in our own thinking, because that's where we were, not in God's thinking. We discover our family relationship with access to God's presence within us, within heaven, we see our true image, the image of Christ, our sonship. God wants to heal us of any emotional wounds so we can know him as our heavenly father. Will you let God father you today? Will you open up your hearts and let the father in? Will you let him embrace you, hug you, whisper love to you? God wants to meet with us. God wants to meet with you now.
I encourage you to close your eyes and begin to come to that place of rest. Begin to think about your breathing, slowing down, focusing your thinking on God who is love. Unconditional love flows through your being. As you are still, let God love on you in that place. You're in a safe place cocooned in God's love. Here's where you can choose to get out of that boat, abandon yourself to God, put your trust in him, sink into that vast ocean of unconditional love. Give God permission to remove those coping and defense mechanisms so you can feel and sense deeper and deeper in love. I believe the Father wants to meet you face to face. I believe the Father wants to look into your eyes and he wants you to look into his eyes. He wants you to feel his heart. The heart of love. The Father wants to hug you. The Father wants to tell you how much he loves you. The Father wants to heal all our wounds and remove all of our scars. So fix your thoughts on seeing the Father face to face. Let that be the desire of your heart. Picture a door, the door in your spirit, the Father's knocking. Invite the Father in. And as the Father comes in, he hugs you and he breathes his very breath into you. Maybe you still feel that you're struggling, carrying any negative things towards your parents. Just hand those things over to the Father. If you're carrying guilt and shame about your own parenting, hand it over to the Father. If you have any wounds, let the Father show you and let him heal you. As you breathe in his life deeply, you feel the rhythm of his heartbeat as he hugs you, as he embraces you. You feel like you're home in his embrace. Hear his words, I love you. 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 I love you.
I believe God would just start whispering directly into your heart some of those amazing thoughts he has about you a vast sum of thoughts all good and as he speaks let them restore you to his original desire for you as he shares his heart of love but words of love and affirmation and encouragement of nurturing and caring of compassion I love you I love you you are the treasure of my heart the apple of my eye you are my deepest desire I love you I love you I love you I love you